That is still the big question out here tonight. What went wrong when he was trying to remove this huge oak tree? Just to give you an idea how big it is, I want you to look at the stump down here. I literally can walk around in a circle, and this is just a portion, a portion of that huge oak tree that came crashing down. This growing memorial, such a reflection of who this little boy was. You can tell by the loving messages that were left here. One of them, sleep in peace, and another, you always let your light shine. Now, while Colin Kaepernick was protesting police brutality, a lot of people say they've been protesting the national anthem for some time, saying the song itself has racist ties. And when she saw this new facility, this new gym coming to her neighborhood, she was really excited about it, especially when she saw that now open sign and found out they have a drop in daycare. But she says the decision to come here is one she now regrets. This is the kind of demanding workout Stephanie Curry and her husband were looking forward to at the newly opened LA Fitness Gym in Valrico. You're looking at images from inside the drop-off daycare. Plenty of fun things for kids to climb on and explore. But that fun turned to panic, Curry says, one day last September, as her three-year-old son Zayden was hurt in an accident while being looked after in the daycare. The girl from the daycare in that first 10 minutes had said, Oh, all the kids do it. They all jump off the giant plastic frog. She said, I mean, he fell and he hit, he cut his head open on the metal window frame that goes from the ceiling to the floor. Curry says the gash was deep. And I just closed my eyes and I, and I covered it back up and I, I was shaking. I was so frantic at that moment. Little Zayden was rushed to the hospital where he had to undergo stitches. I immediately thought, why, why would you let little children do that? I mean, it. And why wouldn't it be padded? Like, why wouldn't this facility have finished this part of the area? Hi, I'm Tammy from Channel 10. We Welcome tried to get some answers to that question from the operations manager at LA Fitness, Elsie. I need to talk to someone about a little boy whose head was split open here. Um, I would uh, refer you to corporate. Elsie asked us to turn off our camera, which we did, and we have now tried that corporate number for LA Fitness at least a dozen times over a matter of a week and sent as many emails with no response. Back out here live tonight, Stephanie and her husband have hired an attorney to try to get their own answers out of LA Fitness. That's because they have thousands and thousands of dollars in medical bills. Now, if you find yourself in a situation to where you want to file a formal complaint about a business, any kind of business here in the state of Florida, we have posted details on how to go about that on our website, WTSP.com. If you're not really paying attention on your next flight, you could be traveling with a fugitive with a murder suspect seated near you and not even know it. It's a story you'll see only on 10 News. This was the scene out on the tarmac at Tampa International Airport as murder suspect Rick Joseph, on the run for seven years, walks off a commercial plane from New York right along with other passengers, escorted through the airport as Hillsborough County cold case detectives bring him back to face justice. They'll board the prisoner before all the passengers get on and then um, and they'll be restrained both by waist chain and, and cuffed in front and normally wearing a jacket, so to try to be very inconspicuous. Larry McKinnon is a spokesman for the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. We do it hundreds of times a year, so it's not, uh, it's not uncommon. Debbie Asbury doesn't like the idea. I really think it's going to depend on the type of crime that they have. Um, of course, if they're murderers or, you know, serial rapists or child molesters, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable on the plane with them. Um, and I do think that passengers should be notified. Emily Nips with Tampa International Airport says the airlines don't have to notify you, but each airline has its own policy, um, and I'm, some are, you know, willing to work with you if there's for any reason if you're not comfortable flying uh, on an airplane. They, they, in a lot of cases, they might help you make other arrangements. Peter Cannon says he has bigger worries than this. MRSA, germs, people with a cold sitting next to me. So I think there's a lot of other things going on that, I, that I'm more concerned about than a prisoner who's being transported. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office says there's a lot of preparation that goes into transporting prisoners. Also, for those deputies who do this type of work, 
they receive specialized training from the Federal Aviation Administration. Just to give you an idea how big it is, I want you to look at the stuff down here. I literally can walk around in a circle. And this is just a portion, a portion of that huge oak tree that came crashing down. Danny Tomas says at this point, he thinks he was just having a bad day. Having a bad day could have cost Danny Tomas his life. On top of that, children playing nearby could have also been hurt or even killed when that huge crane he was operating came toppling down. It destroyed a motorhome, three other vehicles, along with a homeowner's roof right across the street. What do you think went wrong on Sunday? Um, it was a mistake that I made. I'm, uh, right now I'm in the process of uh, talking to some people in the, in the industry to come up with a final conclusion. As far as that is concerned, um, I have some theories, but nothing in concrete. The neighbors say Tomas has been helpful, even giving them cash out of his own pocket for rental cars. That's until his insurance company can hopefully make things right. I have a pregnant mama here. My husband just got out of the hospital from lung cancer, and my son has to work, she has to work. I mean, and we have no vehicle. Yes, I ended up going to the hospital for high blood pressure yesterday, and then I had to miss work. I'm frustrated. At the same uh, point as some of the neighbors are, uh, I'm a compassionate person with feelings and I know what these people are going through and I'm doing my best to uh, help them out whatever I can. We have just learned an insurance adjuster is going to be coming out here tomorrow to talk with all of the neighbors and see about their property damage. We have been digging deeper and getting some answers about this. We have learned that for homeowners to be able to protect themselves, they need to have property insurance. If you rent, you need to have renter's insurance. You also need to have insurance on your vehicles. The way you are supposed to do this is call your own insurance company first, and they will contact the party that damaged your property. We have much more on this story on our website at WTSP.com. For now, we're live in Largo, Tammy Fields, 10 News.